Here we go. Yo. Oh, man. Five minutes early. I'm impressed. Are you, are you fucking sure you're early, a, baby. Are you sure you're a rapper? <laughs> yeah, I'm rapping, bro. How you doing, man? Good. Nice to meet you face to face, <laughs> even if it's on the phone. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, my head is just big as fuck in the screen right here, dog. You know what oh, I mean? I can back it up a little bit. You know? Back it up. Okay. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Leeds Edutainment Podcast. This is brought to you by Barber Time, Chubby Chickpea, Lifted Productions, and Brand Nation Media. And today we've got a very special guest, West Coast MC, Wildcard. How we doing? Good, man. How you doing, man? Thanks for everything you've done, all the songs that you've organized with me and everything. I, I love that dude, Law Ted, too. I hope that dude blows up, man. I'm really, I appreciate you introducing me to him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought that was a good match, you know, when we did that track. Because, you know, he had that joint that you were, you guys ended up getting on. And I was like, man, who would fit this? And you just came to mind. And I was like, oh, let's do it. And I'm glad yeah, you I liked it. I'm glad, it's, glad everything's worked out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I want to take people back because, you know, there's a lot of people on here. And I like to go back. Um, you are from California, correct? Yeah, I grew up in Southern California, down in L.A. County. Yeah. A little neighborhood called South Pasadena. It's south of Pasadena. And uh, it's like a middle-class neighborhood, but I, I was, like, getting in trouble real young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was, like, exposed to – and my dad was a drug dealer and a meth cook. You know what I mean? So I was exposed to that in my life at a young age. You know what I'm saying? And um, young? Uh, well, he – he was ripping and roaring before I was born, but my parents divorced in when I was four. So I would go back and forth between my mom and my dad. And my dad was always like off the hook. You know what I'm saying? And he actually plays guitar for me now. If you've ever seen any of the videos, the older guy with the guitar, that's my biological father. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's war. That's peace. Yeah. Yeah. So was he like in a trailer cooking? Like, you know what I mean? No, he thing? had like dope houses and like he had a garage set up. And um, and then when I was like 15, I got remember I got in trouble at school. My mom was like, you're going to have to talk to your dad, you know. And I went over to his house and he was like in this bad neighborhood in this drug house with all these hookers and bikers and shit. And I just, you know, started doing dope with the hookers in the back room. You know what I mean? It was just like that was getting kicked out of school, got to go see dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I was exposed to that early on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm, that's, that's going to have an effect. You know? Yeah. My dad wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't a meth cook, but he wasn't the best dad. He really wasn't around. He was, you know, yeah. he, had, he had his issues. He was either drunk, hung over or gone. And um, yeah, yeah. Still my dad, but you know, growing up, he was definitely not there. And uh, so, you know, I, I always talk about that because hip hop is just almost, almost like a bonding form in this issue. <laughs> because growing up, when I was listening to rock music, I've said this before, like you didn't hear these scenarios as much as you did in, in hip hop. Hip hop was like, yeah. this was a common thing. Um, yeah. You know, my community, these things were probably going on, but no one was freaking talking about it. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when. Growing up in California, when did you make the transition to Washington, or is this is this much so, later? So uh, in 2004, we sold our house down in LA. My, I live with my grandpa, and he moved up to Washington and got a uh, got a house up here. And I was kind of going through it at the time. Sorry, the dog's going off the hook and shit, but I was going through it at the time. I had my own drug addiction and alcoholism kind of running rampant, and. And he just decided he wanted to retire. It was either Washington or Arizona. So we moved to Spokane, Washington, you know. And I came up here with him and kind of got my life back together because I was like, I was just addicted to dope. And, and I would be driving, like I'd try to go to a meeting or something, you know, because I've been around recovery for a long time too. And, and the car would just like turn to the trap house, you know what I mean? And I was yeah. just like, couldn't figure out how to not, continue to use you know what i'm saying so I do. uh it was kind of a geographical solution i mean it was more for him to retire but it, it started with me coming up here with him and then you know going to meetings and stuff like that and meeting people that were sober and and i and i was able to stay sober for nine years uh 2005 to 2015 and then i i I was touring a lot. I was going crazy. I was on the road. I went on the Mad Child tour with Slane. Uh, I did Bone Thugs and Harmony tour. I did my own tours. And then I just slowly stopped 
you know, like connecting with recovery, you know, and I mm -hmm. got miserable enough to drink. So I got, I, I, I relapsed in 2015 and, uh, was out there for three years. And now I, if I make it till September 19th, I'll have three years sober, you know? Yeah. That's great, man. I got, I, uh, I'm, I, I walk a similar path, brother. I have 12 years clean. Yeah, I saw that. I saw your coin. I appreciate that, bro. That yeah. definitely like you're like family then if you know how, how it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I do. You know, and uh, it, it's the struggle is real. And it's, you know, you know, every, it's one day at a time, you know, and the fact that you got three years and you got back, you came back. That's a freaking miracle right there. You know yeah. What I mean? You know, yeah, because uh, I didn't know if I was going to make it. I never lost hope, though, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I had done it before, so there was always that glimmer that maybe I can do it again, you know what I'm saying? There's yeah, if you, if, you get, if you get away from it, that's what happens, unfortunately, you know what I mean? Yeah. See, that's usually the story you hear, you know? Like, I got away from everything, and they got away from recovery, and, you know, I ended up relapsing. But yeah, I'm glad yeah. you're back, and we're glad you're making music, and it's it, this is what you need to be doing, you know? Yeah, for sure. It's funny because I didn't even know that about you when I started working together. You know, like normally I would know something like that, but I just, I just started working with you based on your talent. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. Like, I was like, oh, that. and then I started to put pieces together when I was like watching your videos and shit and the stuff you said. I was like, oh, I'm, yeah, I can tell that he's clean and sober, trying to do that. You know. Yeah, yeah. So I want to go back a little bit to, you know, we, we fast forward a little bit, but I want to go back to the Odyssey that album. And that okay. video, you know, because you say that, you know, you're a, you're an actor, you're a filmmaker and you're a lyricist. You know, these videos that you put together are pretty not your average rap in front of the wall video. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Like this Odyssey one, I'm guess the, the album, the Odyssey and then the video, the Odyssey. Uh, I'm guessing this is based on your life a little bit. Yeah, yeah. The Odyssey was that that was like my life as a kid and then growing up. And that's what we kind of put together in the video. You know what I mean? And the oh, reason my videos yeah. look like that is because I work in film. That's like my other job. You know, I work in actual film production and, and worked on TV shows and stuff like that. So I met people that were like uh, professionals in the industry. So, you know what I mean? I, I was able to make those videos for um, just a little bit of money. And they, you know what I'm saying, were like kind of bigger than life as far as me. I, I've always wanted to make, when I when I hang the rap jacket up, if that ever happens, okay. I want to make movies. You know what I'm saying? So what do, you actually do, what, do you actually, what do you actually do in the film business? So I've done a bunch of, I've done a bunch of things. I've done PA work, extras wrangler. Uh, I've done, um, my main job is locations though. I'm an assistant locations manager. So that means my boss will scout the location they're going to shoot at. And then I'll be on set and I'll be the middleman between, you know, Hey Phil, there's a weed whacker, the guy with the weed whacker, we need you to shut him down. Or how do we yeah. turn all these lights off? Or, you know what I mean? I'm the person, the liaison between the crew and the place we're at, you know? Cool. And you like that? Yeah, it's awesome, man. It's long hours, man. Just, you know, minimum 12 hours, 12 hour days, you know? And, uh, but yeah, that's what I did for seven years, but it, it, it was cool because I was able to like, I'll work on a movie for a couple months and then I'll have a couple months off. So I spend the time on the music and then go back and forth like that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I see sure. Lindsay here. Thank you, Lindsay. She said arson wrapped a sick video. Yeah. We'll get to that later. Um, okay. Shut up, Lindsay. Um, any movie you work on any movies I would know? Uh, there's a, been a lot of independent ones, but uh, Z Nation, the show that was on Sci-Fi Channel, I was actually in the first episode of that, and I worked locations on that for three of the seasons. They did five seasons, or two and a half of the seasons. Cool, I haven't seen and that. And check that out. 21 and Over was shot in Seattle. It was like a college movie. I don't know. That was one of the bigger ones. But there's been a lot of independent, more independent ones, you know? Yeah. I want to go back to Washington Spokane, how far is that from Seattle? Like about four hours. We're on the we're on the east side of Washington, so we're like near the Idaho border. Oh wow! So that, is it rural? No, it's like it's like city and country mixed together. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Is, is there much of a hip hop scene out there? I mean, yeah, there's definitely a scene. You know what I'm saying? I I, I spent a lot of time here uh, making a name for myself. You know. And, yeah, there's definitely rappers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking of, like, Washington, when I think of rappers uh, over the years, I think of Sir Mix-a-Lot, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. 
Uh, Macklemore and Macklemore. Uh, uh, what was the other? Oh, what's the other one? I just lost it. There's a there's a duo. Blue Scholars. Blue, Blue Scholars. Scholars. Yeah. Yeah. Who else? Yeah, who else they're in Seattle. Washington? That's about four hours west of me. Who else do we got from Washington out there? I mean, my boy, Dead Poet, is a Spokane yeah. native. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for me, I'm a transplant, though. You know, like, I grew yeah. up in California, so I, like, yeah. I'm just – I this has been my second home for a long time, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's cool. I mean, I know how that feels. I grew up in uh, – all over New England. You know, I live okay. in northern Massachusetts, southern New Hampshire, Boston. Now I'm on South Shore. <laughs> so I'm – Yeah, I'm yeah. Over, not, not as far as L.A. to uh, Washington, but, you know. yeah. Moved. Shout out to New England. My dude, Apathy, put me on, like, that whole, you know what I mean, scene up there. He had me do a couple shows with him in Connecticut and Rhode Island. Never been to Boston, though, bro. I always wanted to go, but I've never been, you know? We'll get you, we'll get you out here for sure. Okay, for sure. I got slain on a couple tracks, too. So, I mean, yeah. I've been introduced to that, you know what I mean, style. And being a West Coast kid, I always loved West Coast music, but I really identified with, like, East Coast hardcore shit, you know? Yeah, why was that? What were you influenced by? I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I liked Grave Diggers a lot when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, so I remember bad. being blown on weed and we were driving <laughs> and I feel like Grave Diggers was like on the hood rapping at me. You know what I'm saying? I was just like captivated by them. You know what I'm saying? That's a great album, Six Feet Deep. Yeah, the, the Six Feet one, Deep. I, I, I like the second one too. <laughs> yeah, I, I beat myself up shovel. because... There was a CD store in Alhambra, California called Penny Lane where I, they used to do a lot of underground stuff. And, uh, and I saw the Grave Diggers, uh, what is it, the pick, the shovel, and the, what's Sickle. the name? Sickle. Sickle. I saw and it had all their autographs on it, bro, and I didn't oh. buy it, dog. I, I didn't the, buy it. I had the life-size poster of that album Yeah, um, in my room. Hold on a second. My dog's going nuts. All right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I had the life size, like uh, six feet tall one, and uh, yeah, hanging in my wall. I, and I, I get ruined in the in the move, unfortunately. But that was a that was a great poster. That's a slept on album. I think every that album is like the second album was a lot wasn't as rah rah as the first one. Yeah, and it wasn't so horrorcore as the first one. I think people just yeah want because in that short period of time, like horrorcore for rap died quick. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But from between 94 to 97, by 97, no one's listening to horror. So they kind of switched their style to be more like, you know, at the time, you know, yeah. just kind of went a different route with it. And a lot of people are like, eh, but I think looking back on it, it's classic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I like the Grim Reaper a lot, just and hit the first album when he was just yeah. going crazy, you know what I mean? Sparks through the dark, like all that shit. It just really yeah. talked, it spoke to me, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just it, it, they just that unit at that time. It was it's a great album. That that first album was just like flawless. Yeah. Um, but word like going back to the Odyssey, I also noticed um, it, on this album you kind of start rapping fast because I, I yeah, noticed yeah. on the early stuff you don't really rap as fast. Yeah. Um, when did that? How did that develop? And because you're really good at rapping fast, not everybody can yeah. do that. You you have uh, an exceptional skill for that. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I mean, as a kid, I would break down like bone thugs, like I would slow it down and write what they were saying. And that, you know, just as a kid before I even started music and shit. And uh, I don't know, something just came up in me as the years progressed that I wanted to attack the beat more. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, cause the, the earlier joints, like the, I put two albums out in 2007 and, um, one by myself and one with my boy dead poet before he got locked up for bank robbery. Damn. And, uh, and I was like, I just was my style at the time, but as it progressed, I wanted to like leave no room in the beat. You know what I mean? Like I just wanted to attack it and always be, you know what I'm saying? Riding the beat super heavy, you know? Yeah. And then people go crazy at shows. You know what I mean? When I do right. like chasing the dragon or something, they'll be like, Oh shit. He's like, you know, that's something that, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, it's just my mind connects like that. You know what I'm saying? And I got to shout out my grandpa, too, because he's the one who taught me how to creatively write, like write stories, creative writing. And he would be like, Joe goes to the store and, and then he'd hand me the pen and I'd be like, and he gets milk. And you know what I mean? He would just like school me like 
as a youngster reading the dictionary the thesaurus you know what i mean like he just really expanded my mind on like english you know what i'm saying yeah that's very important. It's very important. yeah a great yeah. vocabulary is very important for rappers they don't seem to not everybody knows that but you know yeah the, the bigger your vocabulary and the more words you know the better mc you're going to be hands down yeah yeah for it's, sure most of the best MCs I know have like extensive uh, vocabulary, and a lot of it is what you just said, like a relative was schooling them early and all this other stuff. Um, yeah. So that that's a big foundation block. Yeah, for sure. Um, you talked about touring with you know, with Slain and um, and Madshot. I remember that tour. Um, I don't remember you know you, but I remember them going on tour with that. But you also said you toured yeah. with Bo you toured with Bone Thugs. Yeah, I toured with Bone Thugs. So I had a, oh. if you look way back into my history, I had a song with Crazy Bone in 2006 called Close to You. So I was a youngster at the time and I saw Crazy Bone in a in the Burbank airport down in California and I had a demo on me and I ran up on him like, yo, I don't mean to bother you. I know who you are, you know, <laughs> please check this out. And then he listened to it and he called me and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to blow up. This is it. Oh, my God, I'm ready. You know what I mean? But it just never really panned out. I don't just business wise, everything else. You know, I flew down there, made a couple tracks and then came home. And then we just we just have like missed each other over the years. But in 2014, uh, he reached out to me and said, you know, I could jump on this tour with them. They were going through Texas. It was called the Texas Takeover Tour. And then took me to Minneapolis or uh, Minnesota and then Canada. And yeah, it just didn't, it just never really like fully panned out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What was that but yeah, I'm like? cool with Crazy Bone though. I still talk to him once in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I would say Bone Thugs is probably a big influence on you, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like East 99, you know what I mean? Like that, that whole album, you know, yeah, I had that like immersed in that shit you know yeah yeah that's a classic right there no I, yeah. i've done i've done a few bone thugs and harmony shows here at the middle east oh dope and uh which is a smaller venue for them but they were playing it for some reason they were playing smaller venues at the time um but those shows were always fire like ridiculous yeah and they were all were there uh i think one i think they're all there for all the shows all the members yeah, the only the only one I didn't meet was Lazy Bone. He wasn't on that uh, Texas Takeover tour. I take that back. The first show I did with him, Lazy Bone was on there. The second one, he was. I think he was out of the group at that point. Yeah, something he was, was doing something else or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what the what happened yeah. exactly, but yeah. I've done a, a solo. I've done a solo Lazy Bone show. Okay. Yeah, he had a really really interesting tour manager. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was that's cool. Ridiculous guy wanted a carton of Newports just for him. <laughs> so for sure, manager, he put a cart. In, the tour manager put a cart in Newport's in the rider just for him, not for for Lazy Bone. <laughs> it was making that like a deal breaker. He was like, "If I don't get, if I don't get the Newport's show, ain't happening." I was like, Dude, "I'm not <laughs> buying you a cart in the freaking Newport's for you, you know?" Yeah, but uh, that's some of the stuff. So, uh, all right. So, I want to fast forward again to 2015, where you released the arson rap video this is where i find out about you okay um, because it was produced by apathy yeah and at this point i'm like going through all new artists i'm just like you know i'm just messing around on the internet you know this is kind of like the end of the blog era but they're, they're posting new in new artists and stuff like that so that's why i come up come across with you and the video and the song is fine and your ability and apathy's involved in it. and then the video the video is <laughs> again <laughs> going back to graphic <laughs> yeah i was going through a dark time like that oh, that I, time i was just i don't know what i was going through but i just was like dark you know things were getting dark mentally so that just showed you know i had all that to my disposal like all the people and uh you know and uh yeah it was dark man that's i i relapsed in july of 2015 and i think we did that in we released it in, um, I don't know, was it February 2015? No, that was – no, we did a Halloween of 2015. So I'd already went out, but I shot the video prior to that, you know? For those who haven't seen it, describe what goes on in the video. <laughs> so <Some> people <laughs> – Yeah, so um, so there's a hooker, okay? 
and she sex is worker. followed by a masked man and yeah sex worker sorry don't get pissed <laughs> you know what i mean and she's followed by a masked man who attacks her and then she wins at the end not spoiler alert you know what i mean i think there's but a i don't know what it. i was going I think through at the time like <laughs> yeah to the video so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll just spoiler alert uh, for those who haven't seen it. The girl gets into the car with a, a, a customer and uh, a guy, a guy shows up in a mask with a shotgun. I think that was played by you. It looked like yeah, it was you. It was yeah, me. Yeah. yeah. And shoots the, the customer in the face with a shotgun and then tries to get the hook, the, the sex worker out of the car where she, she gets a tire iron or something and smashes him in the face. And then, Really, they go into detail of her smashing <laughs> wild card in the <laughs> face, where his face is just exploding, and, and it's 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 absolutely horrifying to watch. And then she walks yeah. away. She walks away, and the credits roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, cutting to uh, wild card wrapping his ass off with uh, some crazy verses and crazy lyrics, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah that. Quite the production job on that one, man. I give it to you. Yeah, Again. and I was working on Z Nation at the time, so like I had all these people. Like the fire behind me was a special effects guy. He came out for the day. You know, the uh, special effects of the body getting hit. That was like a obviously like a fake mannequin. You know what I mean? And and the the gun. You know, the car I rented from somebody. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. I just had a lot of things at my disposal at that time because we were all working on this big TV show, you know? Yeah, I mean, you really have tied in all these <laughs> skills you have learned into making music videos, and it's really paid off. You have a good amount of views, and you got a bunch of followers and subscribers. I mean, it looks like it's working pretty well for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is I, I, I mirrored, like, the old Aerosmith videos where there'd be, like, a short film in the middle of the music video. That's the, the formula I wanted to bring back, you know, is, like, bringing yeah. that short, short film thing back with the music videos, you know? Yeah. And then you got your dad, you, know, you got your dad in some of the earlier videos playing guitar. It, and that's the other thing, too. You got the blues influence that you use in some of the, the songs, you know, the blues guitar and whatnot. Where did that come from? So that's just Pops. He grew up in that classic rock era with Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and BB yep. King, and and I always, I've always liked blues. You know what I'm saying? I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I used to just drink and listen to blues and fucking, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> My life is terrible. <laughs> yeah, just you know, John Lee Hooker, just fucking, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and I thought that would be a cool formula: is father and son mixing his generation rock with my generation hip-hop and because that's not done a lot you know what I, mean? I mean you hear guitar and and hip-hop but as far as like a main formula you know what i'm saying it was something that i thought was a little different you know i've done a lot of that work too i, I used to work with this artist right hook um, oh yeah right hook's dope yeah yeah he, he he tied in a lot of uh blues elements to his stuff he, he, Definitely. he sang and he did a lot of that we really tried to do that with his album modify and, yeah, uh, that's that's a great album. You, should check, you know, yeah. check that out. You, you know, anyone listening, check that out. That's a good one. But let's okay. talk about you. Uh, your dad. I mean, is is he not staying out of trouble these days? How did you get back together? Because it sounds like it was pretty. Crazy. Yeah, he's staying out of trouble. He's been clean for years. You know what I'm saying? Like right. he he he's cleaned his life up. I don't know how long it's been, but we've been. Um, you know, like steady doing shows more more so in like 2012 and beyond and after you know what i'm saying that's really when i had like a good manager and the odyssey dropped and i had a lot of i kind of had a little team with me at the time so the odyssey i was really like buzzing you know what i'm saying when that came out you know and then yeah he stayed clean you know he 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 married a good woman and just settled down and put all that crazy shit behind him you know what i'm saying it goes to show you, man, you know, you get clean, you, you work recovery, you can get your life, you can get your family back. It's not all over. You know, some people think there's no way back, but, you know, your your family is a perfect example. You do the right thing, you can get it back, you know. Definitely. And that's something as a son watching him struggle, I just always wanted him to see, I just wanted to see him come back from that, you know what I mean? And yeah. just do what he's going to say he's going to do and shit like that. And, and that's what happened, you know. 
That's great. My dad, unfortunately, didn't make it back. So it's a miracle. Oh, sorry, bro. It's all good. It's uh, it happens, and uh, I'm at peace with it. But you know, it's like I said, it's a miracle that yours did. So you know, yeah. Salute to your dad. It's not easy shit. Yeah, for uh, sure. So yeah, so so 2015, the video for Arson Rap comes out. It's fire. The tracks fire. Why does it take so long? Five years for you to put an out, put the album that it's on out. Because I like relapsed. Oh, that was the relapse. Yeah, the I relapsed. Time. I relapsed in 2015, for and for three years. So, and I would try to, and you know, like I get like three months sober and be like, all right, I'm gonna jump into this. I got an album on the shelf. I got to put it out, and then I relapse again and have to cancel a bunch of shows and all this shit, you know. So I finally talked to somebody who was sober in the music industry, and they were like, give yourself a year before you even touch the music, just focus on recovery. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because, you know, it gets my, everything starts ramping up and I'm like, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to make this happen. You know what I mean? And it took a, it took a while, you know, so I was out there for three years and then I gave myself one year of sobriety before I touched anything. And then that's when, as soon as I got a year, I, I uh, came back up here. I was living in California at the time. I came back up here and put the war out. But yeah, I feel bad because I have like a good cult following of people that, that fuck with me and they were just like waiting. You know what I mean? It was like on some detox shit. I was like, the war's coming. You know, it was supposed to come out in 2018 and then they were like, oh, we're so excited and didn't come out for another two years, you know? So that's why I dropped this one uh, last month is because I talked to Self Titled and he was like, yo, you do wait a long time between releases you know and i was like yeah you're right let me get on let me get on something new for these people because i've made them wait for so long for the last one you know i want to give them something the year the year after you know yeah so the album the war is through this five years in the working album maybe more five plus years we'll say that you know, it features crooked king crooked on there crooked eye you have a yeah. video with him another epic yeah. video <laughs> yeah yeah so this one <laughs> He's <laughs> got Crooked Eye in the video, high quality shot. Him, you guys in jail. Yeah. In the in the, the video revolves around someone escaping jail. Right? Yeah. And, and and stabbing and <laughs> all this violence, and then explain the ending. I forget the ending. What happens at the end? Spoiler. So alert. you know the old tales from the crypt. Do you ever watch yeah. those? Oh yeah, absolutely. So there was always that was what I based that on was like. Guy breaks out of prison, carjacks yep. or gets a gets a car, drives to a house, sees a woman, thinks he's just gonna go into the house and take over the house, and oh, it's yeah. and ran by a cult yep. of fucking, you know what I mean, like devil worshippers and shit, and he That's gets right. sacrificed. <laughs> so as you can see, as we as we're discussing the the, the the theatrics in these videos. Um, so the other thing I want to go back to is you, you seem like you rap about it and you use a lot of imagery with the whole pentagram cult, but you have some spirituality on the positive side with you. You know, you talk about that as well. Is this, yeah. is this whole thing like a mesh between the devil and God with you? Like, is it? I mean, seems... to be honest, like uh, I was, I was in a lot, a lot darker place when I was putting the war together, you know? And, um, I was just open to more like darker stuff. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm not as much, you know, like yeah. I saw the, uh, I saw the war. I bought the, the art from a guy named Dave McDowell who did the, the, the war cover and it has like three kids and a pentagram and all that. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I was like, that's just a dope ass cover. You know what I'm saying? Like I need to have that. And I'm just, I, I want to make it clear that like i I have a God, I have a higher power. I like go for the lighter spiritual side now, even though I'm, I got the raw rap shit still. I don't want people to think I'm just like this dark person. And if you listen to me, you're fucking giving your soul up or something. Cause that's not what I want. You know what I mean? To come across, you know? Right. But I just wanted to make with lucky devil. I wanted to make a little horror based tales from the crypt kind of episode, you know? Oh, you did. And the other thing I like to bring up is that you're on there with one of the best MCs, uh, punchline rappers, battle rappers, King Crooked, and you yeah. hold your own. You hold your own with this guy. Thank you, bro. <laughs> you know, like it's not like King Crooked who can blow away your favorite rapper in a verse. Uh, yeah, definitely. He, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. 
And you, uh, what, what was that like working with him on the track? It was super cool. I mean, because I had looked up to him being from L.A. County. I had heard his name years ago, you know, and he was yeah. always just like somebody that was like super spitter, super lyricist, you know. And uh, awesome. so I knew I had to put my best work, you know what I mean? I had to put my best into it or I'd get outshine, you know. I think the only time I really ever got big brothered on a track was the first time I put apathy on a track. He he, big brothered me. You know what I'm saying? Like, definitely. I don't want to say he killed me, but like, you know, he was just like his wordplay was just wicked. It's a song called Witch Doctor. If anybody hasn't heard it, but uh, but yeah, I knew that I would get outshined if I didn't bring my A game with Crooked Eye. You know what I mean? So I really put everything I could into it to make sure that that didn't happen. You know? Uh, it's a dope track, man. It's really dope. You know, Thanks, like you man. said, you know, the War was the album we're talking about. It's got King Crooked. Uh, you know, it's got apathy, it's got mad child and slain, it's got diabolic, it's got dead poet devil, sapient. Is that how you pronounce it? Sapient, that, sapient, and simple. yeah, these are all the featured yeah, artists. Simple, yeah, and then productions by what Rob the Viking and you got Sea Lance and who else? Sea Lance, Rob the Viking, my dude Smoke M2D6 from Western Washington. He he put the odyssey beat together the lucky devil beat gag order uh fucking the gallows he's he's been like one of my main guys that i've used for a long time he's the one who basically produced the whole odyssey album yeah that's dope great work man great work on that album you know i know it took five years and you know the, the back and forth with the relapses and everything but you know yeah I, I, i've worked with artists that have had a similar issue happen you know where they were struggling to stay clean and they wanted to get back to the album and it was the same thing you know it was like they'd go all in on the album and then just fall off and relapse and you know and then go away from the album it was just a nightmare going back and forth um, in the whole process. So I, I respect that you took time off to do it, even though my I'm just glad I had a mentor to tell me like, yo, take a year, you know, cause me, I was like, I'm going to lose fans. I'm going to lose my buzz. I'm going to lose everything. You know what I mean? But every time I tried to do it again, I'd have to cancel shows and, yeah. and I just wasn't in the mind state to be, you know, like I wasn't in the same place, you know? Yeah. With me, with me, it was like the artist I was working with, I, I didn't, they wanted to create and I didn't want to be like, don't create while they were getting sober. I was, cause part of me was like, I don't want them to lose their joy. Right. So it was like, if they're trying to do the right thing and, and, and this is what they're looking forward to, I didn't want to say, no, you shouldn't do that. Um, but in hindsight, I don't, I don't know how, how much <laughs> it, it helped them, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. But I guess maybe everyone's different when it comes to that. Yeah, for sure. But uh, so this new one, um, this new album that you just dropped, Shadow uh, Shadow Work. I'm sorry. Yeah. So this was just like you wanted to do this as like a quick follow up. Yeah, you know, and and my homegirl passed away. She had overdosed on heroin, and the people that was with her threw her body in the lake up here and shit, and it was like Damn. on the news and. And she was like, I'm on the cover. Yeah, that's her on the cover. I had Chris B. Murray. I don't know if you know Chris B. Murray, who does a lot of apathy work and all that. Um, I reached out to him to draw her. And then I got a song about her, too, called Upside Down Rose that means a lot to me. And I got a video, too. It's it's more the video's more stripped down. It's more basic. It's not the big short film formula. It's just me rapping and then pictures of her so that I can kind of give a story about, you know, her her name was kim vizina i got her blasted on my arm too you know what i mean rest in peace but she was a close friend and yeah that happened and that really made me spiral hold on a second let me let the dog in real quick all good but uh yeah so that was the thing with that you know i wanted to give her an album because she was always in the front row at my shows and supported me and then that happened to her so i wanted to uh you know show her some love you know what i mean man that's crazy man that's a, that's that, I'm, I'm that's awesome that you did that it's a horrible situation um yeah tragedy you know that that's what how it goes out there and the, out there sometimes man you hear the yeah. stories man it's just not the epidemic is real man it's no matter where you are it doesn't matter yeah definitely so where's your mind at now i mean i'm good man i'm just uh i'm about to start another film here in a couple weeks 
And then I'm planning on hitting the road in the beginning of next year at some point, you know, if I can put like string some dates together, you know, because like when I dropped the war, COVID came like two months later. So I never was able to tour that out, you know, yeah. and then I put shadow work together over the last six months or so. And then, uh, you know, I need, you know, I have like good following on my website and wildcardqm.com if anybody wants to add themselves to it or add them to the newsletter. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is you got to tour the album, you got to put it in people's faces and you know what I mean? Stay relevant like that. And I haven't been able to do that for a few years. So I want to do something like that, you know, next year. Well, I also want to thank you for doing the joint you laced for us, you know, with Reef the Lost yeah. Cause, Demons at Your Door. I mean, I really appreciate that too, man. You yeah, for that. sure. Definitely. I still like that Reservoir Dogs with Lotteb, man. Oh, yeah. That one's dope, Because as soon as I heard him, I was like, oh, fuck, I really got to come hard, you know, because the dude is dope. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So I appreciate you reaching out about that, you know what I mean, and kind of introducing me to, like, your scene a little bit, too, since I'm since I'm all the way out here, you know? Yeah. Well, no problem. I mean, you fit, you fit, like I said, your style is, even though you're a West Coast dude, you fit in with a lot of the shit out here on the East Coast. Yeah, you know what I mean, your style is more of a more of an East Coast. I'm not trying. I don't really know how it is in Washington, but no, I, I appreciate say, it. If I, listening to you, I would have taken you for an East Coast dude. Your accent, you have a bit of a Western, uh, West yeah. Coast accent. But other than that, the way you rap and the beats you choose, that's very East Coast. And that's what I grew up on too. Was a lot of that East Coast hardcore shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ill Bill and all that. You know, nonfiction back in the day and. Yep. I've done a I've done an Ill Bill show. I've done a nonfiction show. I've done a La Coca no. show. All crazy. So I got to ask you, what kind of you know? In, you're into film and stuff, and I'm a big movie guy. Not as much as I used to be, but solid. What type of movies do you like? I mean, as you can see from the videos, horror? I like some violent dramas. I, I'll watch horror. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like Tarantino shit, Scorsese shit, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like. Uh, I just told my friend about a movie from 1990 that got overshadowed by Goodfellas called State of Grace. Did you ever see that with Sean oh, yeah, Penn? Sean, yeah, Sean Penn. Yeah, the Hell Kitchen Harris. movie. Gary yeah, Oldman, yeah. That's Gary Oldman. Is, kills it. I love his – that's my favorite Gary Oldman character ever. You know what I'm saying? Or how about Gary Oldman in True Romance? Yeah, yeah. He was dope in that, but he was <laughs> sure, in such a sure. small part. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's the best part of the movie, though. Yeah, for well, sure. Besides, besides the Dennis Hopper. Uh, yeah, Christopher, Christopher Walken shit. Scene, yeah. yeah. He loves that one. But the way they made Gary Oldman look with the eye and the back. Yeah, and the, the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Must What's have thought it was White Boy Day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the tooth and shit. Just, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, come on. You know I'm pretty. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about Tarantino? What's your favorite Tarantino one? Probably Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, of course, be, Pulp Fiction was a, yeah. such a classic, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I, really, I still see yeah. anything he does, you know? But, like, I liked him back then more. You know what I mean? That was more, you know, that was more my style was all that just bloody dialogue, crazy shit going on. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Pulp Fiction <laughs> is, like, it's hard to beat that one just because it was the first of that, like, style, really. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just an all-star cast, and it's just like it's it's just once you've seen it, it's just like it's just almost too good. It's like almost mainstream. It's so good. It is pretty yeah. much mainstream. Reservoir Dogs is you know prior to that, still great. What do you think of the Kill Bills though? You must like the Kill Bills. Yeah, I like the Kill Bills. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> like the Kill Bills, man. Definitely for sure. I saw both of those in the theaters. You know what I mean. I yeah. saw everything in, in theaters except for Reservoir Dogs. That was like home video style shit back then. Yeah, I, I saw it like just kind of because I was a Harvey Keitel fan back in the day. Yeah. I didn't really know who Tarantino was then. I had seen True Romance, but like that didn't really pay attention to who directed and wrote things. Um, yeah. And I just liked Harry because like Harvey Keitel was doing Bad Lieutenant and all this crazy shit back then. So it's like, oh, what is this movie he's doing? And then I ended up watching Reservoir Dogs. But I, I was like 13 maybe 13, 14 years old, my mind didn't really, wasn't like, I didn't get it yet. You know what I mean? It wasn't until I watched yeah. it again later, um, in like 97, where I was like, oh, this shit is so dope. I got my mind, you know, my brain matured a little bit. I could handle it. Yeah. Because a 13-year-old kid watching Reservoir Dogs, it's like, 
Yeah. <laughs> no, like, for sure. Watching? And another movie was fucking Kids, bro. Oh, jeez. So that, <laughs> that, that I saw, that came out when I was actually a senior or junior in high school. Okay. So like, that was like, I was the same age as those people. Um, yeah. It was shot in California. I don't know. You're probably a little young. No, it's a now. New York movie. Is it New it York? New York City. Right. Yeah. Sorry. You're right. You're right. It was New York City. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought it was L.A. for a quick second. But yeah, that was. But uh, yeah, that movie changed me because I thought like, all right, we're supposed to drink 40s, fight and fuck. You know what I mean? And that's what we're going to yeah. do. So that's what my crew did. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. saw that movie and when. So it changed my life. That's why I got it tattooed on me, bro. You know what I mean? Did you, the director, what's his name? Larry Clark? <laughs> Larry Clark, yeah. Yeah. Did you watch any of his other movies after that? Yeah, I've seen like Bully. I saw Ken Park. I yeah. saw. Right, um, so let's stop you real quick on Ken Park. <laughs> those yeah. That, that was the, those, those that haven't seen Ken Park, uh, you want to see a very controversial and shocking movie, get the unedited version of Ken Park. And yeah. Uh, puts kids to bed as far as shocking yeah. goes. I still like kids the best, though. You know what I mean? Like, that was my favorite classic Larry yeah. Clark movie, you know? Kid well, Park was a little weird, though. You know what I mean? Little? The dude's, like, jerking off, choking himself, <laughs> and fucking all yeah. sorts of shit. I still love Larry Clark, though. Don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? He's he's definitely dope, you know? Bully he's a visionary, was, you know? Bully was underrated, too. I really like Bully because, you know, that yeah. dynamic between, the, the you know, Brad, Brad Renfro, rest in peace, and yeah. um, Nick, the, Stahl. The, Nick Stahl, who... By yeah. the way, I saw Nick Stahl in uh, a, a season, an episode of uh, Animal Kingdom. He didn't look too good. I don't know if they made him look disheveled on purpose, but, man, he looked bad. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but, I'm watching that right now. I'm addicted to that Animal Kingdom shit, oh, bro. Man, have you seen the movie, the original movie? No, I never saw the movie. Oh, you got to see the original. The original movie is in uh, shot in Australia. And it's, it's not the same. It, it's the same thing with the mother as the head of the crime family. But it's it's a little different story wise. But it's with the brothers and everything that all exists and the cops after them. But it's um, it's only a movie, so they, they, it's shorter. But man, it's it's phenomenal. And I forget the guy's name who plays the uh, the oldest brother. He's like famous now. Oh man, it's all star. It's all star cast. Okay, you should definitely check. If you're watching the show, you should definitely watch the movie. Check the movie out. Yeah, it's on fire. I just got a gallon of milk. No, it's water. <laughs> just drinking a gallon of milk. Yeah, I rap, man. This is my favorite shit to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that what's in the studio these days? You bring the milk? Yeah, I just bring a bunch of milk, like Clockwork Orange. I'm just in there with yeah. milk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a, that's a shot. Oh, what about Kubrick? Are you a Kubrick fan? Yeah, for sure. Of course, you know. Yeah. Uh, what's uh, Full Metal Jacket, The Shining? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I was yeah. into all that, you know. You ever seen the early stuff? Uh, like, like what? Like, is it Doctor Zivago or not? Dr. No, Strange, I never saw like that. Doctor, Doctor never Strange saw that. Film. I kind of picked up movies. Like, so I was born in '82, so I watched a lot of '80s movies, you know, and Me '80s, too. '90s, and shit like that. So, <laughs> not to tell oh, everybody my age, so they're like, "You're old, bro. You can't do this no more." I still yeah. got skill, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? No, we, we don't play that. Uh, so I want to talk about '80s horror movies because you obviously okay. into horror, right? Yeah. So. Growing up, and you're a little younger than me. You're like three years younger than me. But growing up in the video store, back when there was video stores, I'm talking not even, not all mom and pop video stores, not like Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. The I remember horror, those days. The horror section in these video stores was truly horror. Because yeah. I do remember like how graphic the covers used to be. Yeah, yeah, I do like, remember. It was so much blood and guts on the covers of these horror movies that were like B movies at best. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I remember one that was like paint me blood or something, and the woman is just cut open and tortured and blood everywhere, and it's just yeah, on the front yeah. cover. It's on the front cover. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Kids it was definitely walking. an experience in horror when you're just walking around that section. It's just darkness. Oh, you know what I mean? It was so scary as a kid. It was just like, man, they are holding. I mean, that's how they were selling it. You know, and Faces of Death was a big thing back then. Yeah. I thought that was real. Uh, you know, it was like, it, yeah. wasn't, it didn't come out later. It wasn't real at all. But everybody thought Faces of Death was live executions on VHS, which yeah, is yeah. really illegal. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how to put that together, but. But yeah, horror, horror movies in the 80s, man, was just wild. 
Yeah, they were off the hook, bro. Definitely off the hook. Do you like horror movies now? Like, I feel like they just they seem too. There's too much production behind them, and they don't seem as real to me as they did back then. I mean, yeah, like uh, I'll I'll still watch like they. What do they got coming out tomorrow? That movie, Malignant. I just saw the previews. I don't know. It's, I'm gonna check it out. I'll, I always check out horror movies. You know what I mean? When they come out, I'm just I'm just into them. You know. Let me ask you this last what? one. Midsummer. Oh man, fuck, dude! Holy <laughs> shit, bro! Biggest that was so disturbing. Ever. It made me pissed off at the director. It made me think, like, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? You know what I'm right. saying? <laughs> Just made me think, like, what is, what is going on with you that you're? But I, I mean, it was a great film. We went and saw it in the theaters, me and a couple friends and Cali, Damn. and but we were just like. It was just almost the same as uh, I saw Requiem for a Dream in theaters. Oh, and I was yeah. just like, my mind was just like freaked. I was we're, The credits are rolling and we're all just sitting there like, what the fuck just happened? You know what I mean? Requiem That's how was, it was Midsummer. Yeah, Requiem was like, I first watched that, I was like, whoa. But for some the reason. The music and the yeah. fucking cuts and I, all I that. I liked it. Know? I was just like, this was just dope. But Midsummer sat way different with me to me that was so much more disturbing for some reason because it was, it was like, so disturbing because it was like this cult and anyone that hasn't seen it I, i'm not even recommending go see it because to me it's just freaking awful experience but if you really like fucked up shit go watch it but you know it's just that whole the whole cult and the tort the way they did it man it was so eerie felt so real it's so twisted that i was just like I don't know if I'm getting too old for that shit, but I was just like, <laughs> God damn. I was so, again, I was mad too. I was like, fuck, can you make something like this? Yeah, fuck. yeah. It was so twisted. It was, and it was Did you see totally, Hereditary? Yeah, I saw that prior to that. That didn't bother Same me. Same director. Didn't bother me as much. Midsummer bothered but, me. But he's got something, he's got some, some fixation on tragedy though, where it's not just pure horror like slasher. There's like some deep seated fucked up tragedy happens and it's been you know just like in midsummer in the beginning with what happens with the sister and all that shit you know what i mean <laughs> that was like scene. i couldn't sleep that night bro i was like laying there like holy fuck why did i put that in my head you know what i'm saying some people just because uh, I, I you know once i made my statements about it, people watching like i don't know what's a big deal about it. it all seemed fake to me and blah 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 i was like man for those people Good. I'm glad you're able to separate that. That's great. But to me, I was like, man, the opening scene with the girl with the gas and the kills her yeah, family. I'm yeah. like, God, spoiler alert. But <laughs> yeah, for real. That shit just, bothered me, bro. Man. And, and I thought about is, it for days. I still, I'll never see it again. You know what I mean? I saw it was like out and like it was going to be on somewhere. And I was like, fuck no, I'm never watching that shit again. You know what I mean? I'm glad we're on the same page with this because, you know, some people like, I, I, I struggle finding someone that has that, the same the same exact reaction to that movie. Yeah, no, no. Some I'm people with are like, yeah, that, it's bro. fucked up, man. It's fucked up. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, but I'm like, I'm like you, man. I'm like fucking really disturbed by that fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, bro. Yeah, that one, that one was fucked up. But just like Hereditary, they had that scene of tragedy with the little girl and oh, the family affected, and that was terrible. So it was like that. It was like, damn, it's not really horror. It's like tragedy horror or something. You know what I mean? It's like he does something about – he just has something about deep tragedies, you know? Mixed with cults. Yeah, mixed with <laughs> cult shit because there, there was a cult in both those movies, yeah, right? So, yeah. yeah and then, you know, heredity is more supernatural. That's yeah. what's so scary about Midsummer is there's nothing supernatural about it. This could actually happen. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it probably has happened to some extent, and uh, oh, I could go on. We could go on and on about that one. Or just yeah. like that scene where the the people commit suicide by <laughs> jumping off the fucking rocks and shit. Jumping off a cliff onto a specific rock, and if yeah. it doesn't kill you, the guy comes by with a sledgehammer and finishes the job. <laughs> Yeah, like, like somebody was just drinking coffee, writing that, thinking like this is really going to affect people. You know what I mean? Like that's what bothers me about it, bro. It did its job, man. Whatever those guys did, whoever wrote that, whatever. I mean, they're on a, they on another level. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but we're welcome. We're gonna wrap up here, man. But this is great. Okay, bro. This was great talking to you, man. I look forward to building with you more in the future, man. And, Definitely. Uh, 
all the best on all your challenges. I'm glad everything seems to be working out for you. And uh, yeah, man. I just want to okay, thank everybody. Brother. I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to the Leeds Edutainment Podcast with special guest Wildcard, brought to you by Barber Time, Chubby Chickpea, Lifted Productions, and Brand Nation Media. And I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, bro. Peace.